Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the noon briefing. Today we are joined by our guest, uh, Ms. Michelle Koninsk, the Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Committee Executive Directorate. Um, she will brief you on the Security Council's meeting to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Resolution 1373 and the establishment of the Counterterrorism Committee. Thank you so much for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Kaneko. We uh, are delighted uh, to be here today. Good afternoon to all of you. This morning, I had uh, the honor uh, to, uh, alongside with uh, the uh, chef de cabinet, Mrs. Uh, Viotti, chef de cabinet of the Secretary General, and uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Tarek Ladap, uh, the chair of the Counterterrorism Committee of the Security Council, to open the special meeting of the Counterterrorism Committee. And that is my and to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the adoption of Security Council Resolution 1373 and the establishment of the committee that saw the daylight um, a few weeks after the 9-11 attacks. Um, whereas the chair is not available uh, here to join us uh, due to an overlapping uh, commitment, uh, I have the honor to convey uh, the following uh, message on his behalf. The 20 years, uh, um, uh, um, 20 years ago, on the 11th of September, uh, this very city, as we all know, um, a home of our organization, New York, the Big Apple, was a target of a heinous um, terrorist attack that took almost 3,000 human lives. And the international community, shocked and uh, dismayed uh, of the cruelty portrayed by the terrorism, had to take action. And on the 20th, 8th of September 2001, the Security Council unanimously adopted the Resolution 1373, which is one under Chapter 7 of the Charter of the United Nations. Uh, in the adoption of the Security Resolution 1535 in 2004, so three years later, the Security Council established the Counterterrorism Committee Executive Directorate, also known as CDAT, to support the work of that committee. And over the past two decades, tangible progress uh, has been made in countering terrorism. And yet uh, the Resolution 1373 remains as relevant uh, as it was on the day of its adoption. And this means that the terrorist threat persists and that despite all our efforts over the globe, it sought to survive and evolve. We saw that through the ter uh, territorial expansion and the unspeakable acts both ISIL and Al-Qaeda committed in Iraq and both Syria and around, around the world. We saw it in the exploitation of technologies to radicalize, recruit, prepare and finance uh, terrorism, and in um, it's our responsibility to continue working collectively and cooperatively, uh, cooperative, cooperatively, this is, this is a difficult one, to ensure no tolerance with any terrorist uh, groups, regardless of their targets or motives, to renew our um, steadfast fight against um, uh, terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and to ensure that uh, no uh, territory would be used as a safe haven uh, for terrorism. Allow me also um, to say a few words, words in my capacity as uh, the executive director uh, of uh, CTAT. Um, um, in our global efforts to counter terrorism, we have achieved notable uh, achievements in a number of areas, and those include an increase in the number of states' parties uh, to the international counterterrorism instruments, 19 in total, which in turn enhance international cooperation in criminal and law enforcement matters when countering terrorism. An increased criminalization of terrorist offenses by member states, thereby ensuring that definitions of these acts are well defined uh, in national laws and adequate punishments uh, are prescribed. Strengthened criminal justice uh, systems uh, as evidenced by successful prosecutions of terrorist cases across jurisdictions. Enhanced intelligence sharing partnerships and cooperation to combat terrorism financing, which is key for early warning 
and for preventing terrorist attacks. Strengthened border management measures aimed at identifying and preventing the movement of terrorists and subsequently foreign terrorist fighters movements. Increased national, regional and international mechanisms and structures to enhance cooperation at the political, technical and the operational levels and integrated human rights and gender perspectives in counterterrorism and countering violent extremists conducive to terrorism efforts. This progress could not have been achieved without the Member States' continued political commitment to counterterrorism and meet their obligations under the United Nations Charter, including to implement the Security Council resolutions, the mandate given uh, to CETAT uh, by the Council, the sustained leadership and policy guidance of the Counterterrorism Committee, the close cooperation between that committee, uh, CETAT, uh, and the Member States, and the strong collaboration with an array of partners, including the United Nations Office on Counterterrorism, the specialized UN entities, international and regional organizations, and civil society organizations, and, last but not least, constructive engagement with the private sector entities and other uh, multilateral um, assistance providers. However, despite uh, the notable progress uh, we all do acknowledge over the past two decades, our work is far for, from complete. I would say we're not there yet. Uh, many member states continue to face capacity and coordination challenges. Full implementation of the Resolution 1373 and its successes will require each member state, and there are 193 member states, or each of them, to continue to take specific and effective measures to counter terrorism. It will be especially important that those efforts be effectively um, sustained and supported uh, uh, in the months and years uh, ahead, and the committee's special meeting today offers an excellent opportunity for CETAD to take stock of its uh, activities uh, in the context of the Council's forthcoming review of its uh, mandate. And under the mandate of the Council, and with the policy guidance of the Committee, CETAD remains steadfast in its commitment to support the Member States, all of them, in their efforts to ensure full and effective compliance with their international counterterrorism obligations. This will continue to include uh, identif uh, identity identifying capacity gaps, facilitating technical assistance delivery, and promoting best practices over the past 20 years. I do thank you, and I'm happy to answer uh, questions. Thank you so much. Edie, please. Uh, thank you very much on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association. Thank you for doing this briefing, my name is Edith Lettera from the Associated Press. I have two questions. Um, having actually been here when 1373 was adopted, um, how has the progress in technology over the past 20 years uh, changed how terrorists operate and how counterterrorism is trying to combat what they are doing. And secondly, um, you stated that one of the great goals is to prevent the spread of terrorism. How worried are you about Afghanistan today and the increasing attacks by the Islamic State, which remains determined to reinstitute their caliphate. Thank you. Thank you for these very relevant uh, questions, both equally uh, relevant. Uh, uh, two decades, uh, two 20 years uh, um, of um, 
uh, constantly evolving terrorism threats. The trends have evolved. And one of those uh, trends is certainly that we see more and more uh, the use of uh, new technologies for terrorist purposes. Uh, uh, we, 20 years ago, didn't have our uh, cell phones, didn't have our um, a connection to social media. Now it's an integral part of our lives. Not to forget that uh, under the impulse, uh, or thanks to, or um, um, because of uh, COVID-19, uh, we were even more driven uh, to our home offices uh, and more reliable uh, on um, uh, the um, online um, uh, possibilities. Uh, that is something we have seen gradually um, uh, evolving, uh, and so we, we had to find ways uh, to um, look at uh, what use is being made exactly over the years uh, of uh, the internet, uh, of uh, social uh, media, uh, of new technologies, and we are even now going in looking into the latest technologies like UAS, uh, the uh, so-called drones, uh, uh, unmanned uh, iron uh, systems or vehicles, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, um, and especially when you look at what is um, uh, has been happening over the last eight, 18 months, uh, we saw that uh, uh, the online activity uh, on the COVID-19 has um, exponentially expanded. Uh, uh, and also they're targeting a specific part of uh, uh, our society, especially young uh, people who are heavily connected uh, to uh, the online um, uh, business. And so, yes, uh, uh, when that is used, for good purposes, we would say hallelujah, but when it's been used for uh, terrorist purposes, for bad and uh, um, uh, criminal purposes, it becomes a real concern. And that is where we are. So gradually we saw that um, there was what we called a weaponization of simple things. Look at what happened in specific regions uh, in relation to foreign terrorist fighters coming back, using lorries, using um, uh, simple things, uh, knives. Uh, then going to uh, the uh, uh, social media and the internet, look what happened in uh, Christchurch uh, in uh, March 2019, what uh, um, happened uh, it, with the my use, abuse, misuse of those new uh, technologies and see what now is happening, an expansion of the use for what reasons? propaganda, incitement, recruitment, financing of terrorism, and even worse, not only used by ISIL and Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups, but also by groups uh, who are motivated by xenophobia, a xenophobia uh, a racism, and other forms of, uh, uh, of intolerance, uh, to uh, have misinformation, uh, to misuse the grievances, uh, situation we're all in, uh, to attract uh, uh, people uh, to uh, go in a certain way, which is not uh, the correct way, the legal uh, way. This is a situation we're confronted uh, in. So what we have been doing at CEDAD is uh, a few years ago, we established the Tech Against Terrorism, an initiative that was meant to uh, make the, the um, um, the small and the startup companies at the same level as the big tech uh, companies in order to um, uh, take off um, uh, those uh, inciting uh, propaganda related recruitment uh, 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 narratives. Uh, um, um, we also are uh, closely cooperating with the global internet uh, uh, form to counter terrorism, for instance, another initiative that is bringing different uh, partners together. The solution is to strive for partnerships. Uh, one, partnerships with the research uh, um, um, community, which we have been doing more than five years ago by establishing the GRN, the Global Research Network, which is englobing more than 100 institutions and research uh, centers, and uh, which are in contact with us to go into further and in-depth analyses on what kind of new technologies are being used and furthermore, to step up our partnerships with the private sector who has a lot of data and who is well-placed to work together with others. Uh, we also see that e-evidence, digital evidence, is an integral part of criminal investigations and prosecutions. Without it, uh, we are a little bit lost, uh, and so we also have made efforts with other partners to step up that cooperation. 
very briefly because uh, I have already, I, I think that there will be other questions in relation to new technologies because it's really uh, something that is keeping us awake during uh, a night. It is a real challenge. It's, it's really a trend we have to uh, keep, uh, to keep uh, um, uh, in, uh, in sight. Afghanistan, uh, uh, IS, uh, well, I think that we, we really um, are um, um, concerned by uh, the widespread uh, of um, terrorism and violent extremism across uh, the globe, and some uh, specific regions are highly affected. It was being mentioned earlier this morning, as we have just published, uh, on behalf of the CDC, CDC has published uh, the Global Implementation Survey, 1373 and 1624, and, and give a very good glimpse on uh, what is happening in different regions. And which are the regions being mentioned? Uh, Africa? Uh, be it uh, Sahel, West Africa, Central uh, Africa, um, Eastern Africa, um, uh, so-called um, uh, West and Asian countries or Middle Eastern uh, countries, as we all know. Uh, of course, um, uh, we have been talking about um, South and Southeast Asia and Central uh, Asia. Um, Afghanistan is a matter of concern to all of us. Uh, we um, have been um, uh, looking at initiatives uh, at the level of the Secretary General, uh, who is really um, 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 appealing to the Security Council and to the whole community to take all the steps possible to unite all our tools uh, in order to suppress uh, terrorism and to take care of the fundamental human rights uh, uh, girls and uh, we uh, female uh, rights, uh, the basic rights, and also to ensure uh, full access to humanitarian aid. But all Security Council has uh, been uh, adopting uh, a resolution, as you all know, um, uh, 2593, uh, 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 asking indeed um, uh, the caretaker government uh, to take uh, uh, some requirements uh, into uh, account. Um, the caretaker government has uh, to um, respect those uh, requirements. Uh, uh, of course, more to come. Um, there are a lot of concerns. We see that ISIL, Al Qaeda affiliated groups are uh, expanding uh, uh, and are becoming uh, a real uh, threat. I always refer to them as an oil stain, which is taking forms never seen uh, before. Uh, and, and this is a specific matter of concern that needs to be contained. The only way in doing so is uh, to. Um, join the forces uh, to make sure that we target and focus uh, our um, um, uh, forces uh, in relation to the identified gaps, fragilities and risks, and that we make sure that technical assistance and capacity building is sent to those spots in a minimum of time. Thank you. Majid? Network. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is about the threat of ISIS, um, which they are primarily still operating in Syria and Iraq. If you compare it to the uh, two years ago or three years ago, uh, how big of uh, ISIS of a threat is to the region and to the Syria and Iraq? If you could give us a comparison to the scale of ISIS threat, because they changed their tactics. And the second question I have is a follow-up on Afghanistan. Um, um, do you think Al um, Taliban is now harboring uh, terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda, just like what they, they were doing in the 1990s? Do you see any indication uh, with that regard? Or have you gotten any assurances? Have you seen any indication of assurances from Taliban that they will not do so, harboring those jihadists? terrorist groups, and then they would launch attacks on other countries. Thank you. Well, how, how strong is uh, uh, IS and uh, ISIL and ISIL-affiliated uh, groups? Uh, uh, well, uh, we, we have seen uh, recent terrorist attacks. Uh, um, um, uh, we are talking, especially when we look at, uh, zoom into Africa, at uh, the ISIL uh, for uh, the Greater Sahara, ISIL for the West African province, ISIL for the Central African uh, uh, province, uh, uh, and we have seen attacks. So th this means that they are, uh, uh, I would say, alive and, and kicking, that they are having uh, the uh, willpower and the capacity in doing so. 
uh, we also see that uh, um, uh, the, um, the there were terrorist attacks both in Iraq and and uh, uh, Syria. Uh, on top of this, it's not only about ISIL, but it's also about Al Qaeda affiliated uh, groups. Uh, uh, and uh, look at uh, uh, Al Shabaab, uh, uh, look at uh, Jainim. Um, uh, also there, we see that uh, they are um, uh, quite forceful and have uh, um, demonstrated their uh, capacity in terms of terrorist uh, activity, recent terrorist activities. Uh, going to Afghanistan, we have uh, looked at uh, IS uh, uh, KP. Uh, look at what happened on the 26th of August, claimed by ISKP, and not later than yesterday, the day before yesterday, uh, where a hospital in Kabul had been uh, tackled, attacked. Uh, and in between those two uh, attacks, uh, two times uh, mosques had been attacked. It's, it's difficult for us uh, to, and I think that there are uh, better placed Security Council um, um, entities like the 1267 monitoring team uh, to have a real insight in what are the changes, uh, what are the movements, uh, uh, because we're a little bit disconnected from what happens uh, on uh, the uh, spot. Uh, uh, but we have made uh, different calls so far exactly uh, to... Um, uh, um, um, ask all the member states to join the forces in order to deny um, uh, Afghanistan becoming a harbor or a safe haven uh, for uh, terrorists. I think that we have to um, uh, closely monitor the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, we also need uh, to um, look at the movements in the region, uh, especially in the region uh, around uh, Afghanistan, Central Asia, South and Southeast uh, Asia. Uh, look, if there's no um, uh, sort of um, uh, copying of what happened many years ago in relation to foreign terrorist fighters going massively from more than 100 countries to both Syria and uh, Iraq, uh, but also other countries heavily fragile, fragilized or fragile, um, uh, being inspired of what's happening in Afghanistan and uh, maybe having a, a huge appetite uh, of um, uh, taking over uh, the power and replacing uh, the governments. This being said, this is uh, what I personally think on the basis of what I have uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, in the, the latest uh, weeks. But I think that there are other uh, units, better place to give you more insight in the specific uh, uh, situation uh, in um, uh, Afghanistan. Nabil? Thank you. Nabil Abi Saab, Al Arabi TV station. So, do you have direct contact with uh, Taliban? Uh, we know that Taliban is engaged with many UN bodies. Um, can you tell us what kind of contacts you have with them? And also, because they announced uh, that they commit to uh, to engage with the international community against terrorism, so uh, what can you provide to them? I don't know. Can you can you help them to build capacity, or do you have anything to help Taliban to establish capacities to counter terrorism? Well, let me be very clear. We work, CTAT is a counterterrorism committee executive directorate. We uh, are in support uh, of the subsidiary body, the counterterrorism committee of the Security Council. So we work on the, the policy guidance of uh, the subsidiary body of the Security Council. And it is at the level of the Security Council that uh, um, steps are being taken. Uh, and we will follow the policy guidance of the Security Council. I can tell you that we were in Afghanistan in 2017 doing what we do all, all over uh, and across the board in all the 193 member states. We assess, uh, the, um, monitor the implementation of Security Council resolutions. We have done so for Afghanistan back in 2017. Uh, we have also been in a position because Afghanistan allowed us to share the report with all the implementing partners, uh, be in a position to exchange the content of the report of Afghanistan, both and Iraq, at that point in time, November 2017, with the wider community. So what has been identified back in 2017 is still, um, uh, uh, I would say, uh, applicable to today-to-day. Uh, -to -day. In what extent we will be um, uh, able in the months to come uh, under the policy guidance of the CTC, because Afghanistan is considered to be um, 
priority a country because of the concerns, the security concerns. We all know in what extent we will be able to travel uh, to um, Afghanistan and do what we do in all the other uh, countries that will have to be stipulated further on. Do you mean you're planning? to visit Afghanistan or? When, when, when the CTC decides uh, that we uh, are in a position uh, to uh, take care of um, that uh, matter, we will do so following the policy guidance of the Security Council. We, we are not now going uh, in an, an uncoordinated, uh, unguided um, uh, uh, way uh, left and right. Uh, we have been um, in 181 countries since the establishment of CETAT. Uh, we visited uh, 100 uh, uh, and um, uh, um, we had the 181 visits. We visited 117 countries of the 193, be it comprehensive visits, follow-up visits. Uh, the good thing is that we have been in a lot of heavily affected countries because we have a risk-based approach. So we have a, a fair good insight on what are the uh, needs of the country security-wise, following all the Security Council resolutions, and there were 22 Security Council resolutions. We also are the ones facilitating the delivery of technical assistance. That means that we are the vehicle between Security Council, CTC, and the implementing partners, be it OCT, UNODC, and other entities of the Global Compact, uh, or other bilateral donor states. Uh, and so it's extremely important uh, in the actual context, and especially on the COVID-19, when the means become more and more reduced, and when we really have to focus on the right thing at the right uh, time, at the right uh, place, I think we have to target the real needs, the needs, the gaps, and to make that bridge between the Security Council, CTC, and uh, the um, uh, implementing partners to make sure that we go to the states in dire need of help. And I've just mentioned that ISIL, Al-Qaeda, is, is not being stopped so far. They are expanding in specific regions, and that is something we know because we see that for the CTC are in constant dialogue with and the PRs here in New York and the uh, capitals in the different states and the country teams and the resident coordinators not to miss any any of the, the lacunas, any of uh, the, the gaps, and to make sure that we have not only a short time um, uh, uh, thinking, but also a long term uh, thinking. So th there is a lot going on, but every single uh, activity will happen at the appropriate uh, uh, time um, and not earlier. The gentleman who's been waiting for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ray Shafar from Sky News Arabia. Uh, one of the speakers this morning talked about how terrorism is evolving and changing its methods, uh, using Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to finance its activities and also money laundering. My question is, is there any efforts to track these new forms of financing, whether from the institution you represent or security class? Thank you. Again, a very relevant uh, question. Uh, uh, the financing of terrorism was an integral part of that landmark resolution 1373 back in 2001, and it was kept on the radar because it's one of those uh, um, um, issues that, when taken care of, will allow us to be preventive. If you take away the revenues of the terrorists, uh, you take uh, away their capacities and their capabilities. Uh, and not later than in 2019, uh, there was a new Security Council resolution which was really meant uh, to tackle uh, the prevention of uh, the, the financing of terrorism, tackle countering of um, countering of financing of uh, terrorism specifically. And it has given specific uh, tasks uh, and a specific uh, um, um, activity to, to see that, to go in much more depth and to see what are the national risks of a country in um, being confronted with uh, CF FT, Countering and Financing of Terrorism Activities, uh, to make sure that uh, there is more public-private partnership uh, with the tech industry and uh, the um, um, uh, police and uh, the intelligence services, the FIUs, the Financial Intelligence Units. 
And, and to really go into much more depth, uh, now we see that uh, depending on the country, we are, are confronted with only cash uh, transfers, uh, the Hawala uh, system, or we are confronted uh, with uh, a mixture of um, uh, terrorism uh, and uh, organized crime, sponsoring uh, uh, terrorism, money laundering activities. But also, and more and more, and under the impact of COVID-19, you know that CETAD has um, so far published three um, uh, ethical briefs on the impact of COVID-19 on terrorism and violent extremism, and how we counter terrorism and violent extremism, short, mid, and long term. Well, one of the uh, aspects we see clearly is uh, that uh, the terrorists also change their methods uh, and are now more recurring, uh, because there's more online activity, to um, the crypto money and um, virtual uh, money, which makes the retraceability in some of the uh, member states uh, more difficult. So it is becoming more and more complex uh, in spite of all the good steps taken and all the monitoring. We see that we discover more and more um, uh, needs that need to be covered by uh, targeted technical assistance and capacity uh, building depending on from the, the regions, but it's very, very, very important issue. Celia? Celia Gosa, BOA, Latin America. Um, so terrorism and narco-traffic, um, how is that related in Latin America? In which places do you have m the most concern? We know that our local guerrillas, they have become terrorist groups like the ELN, uh, but also we have seen reports of um, groups from the Middle East, especially Iran, they have close ties in places like Venezuela. Um, what have you seen and what can you tell us? Well, it was in fact uh, under the Peruvian um, uh, chairmanship uh, that uh, um, 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 an, an area formula was organized. Uh, you know that in the first two years, 2018-2019, uh, Peru well, had the chairmanship. Now Tunisia is having the chairmanship for 2020-2021. And it was the, at that point in time, share that brought uh, to the Security Council via an area formula that uh, important link between organized crime and terrorism, which is so specific for the region you just uh, are uh, representing. And, and furthermore, uh, steps were taken to include that uh, result, the conclusions of that area formula, into a Security Council resolution. And that's uh, the last one we had uh, uh, so far, 2482. Uh, We'd see indeed that there is a link between uh, organized crime and uh, uh, terrorism in the region. As we see, for instance, also in Afghanistan, uh, there is a link between organized crime and uh, uh, terrorism, drug uh, trafficking, but all the other forms like trafficking in, in, in human beings, uh, like uh, um, uh, ransomware, like uh, hostage uh, uh, taking, so it, uh, um, trafficking in, in weapons, it depends from the region. There are differences uh, from region to region. Ibtisam? Thank you. My name is Ibtisam Azim from uh, Al Arab Al Jadid newspaper. Uh, first, I have a follow up on the issue of financing. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the revenues and uh, trafficking, etc. Uh, if could you say more on that, and then uh, like what are the main revenues for terrorist organizations? How they get their money, and then my my, my follow up on that too. Um, you seem to have a lot of uh, work on your hands. <laughs> How can you, uh, I mean, do you have enough financial um, manpower support, women? Uh, I mean, how can you do all this work? Uh, are you working with governments? And the last part, um, some governments uh, or uh, leaders uh, use also uh, laws uh, or uh, uh, terrorism uh, as an excuse to silence their uh, opponents or war on terrorism, uh, as an excuse to silence um, uh, people who criticize them, etc. Do you monitor that too? Uh, thank you very much. Well, these are three, three questions. Uh, and um, I think that for um, the financing of terrorism, what is the revenue of a specific terrorist group? And it depends on the terrorist group uh, to zoom in and to see uh, how they uh, are using different forms of uh, crime, um, organized transborder uh, crime, like um, uh, traffickings, uh, with, with the revenues they 
use uh, to uh, sponsor the uh, terrorism financing. In some cases, we have revolutionary taxes. You need to pay every single month uh, a, um, a fee, a tax, uh, and that goes uh, into the terrorist organization. So it's difficult to say that there are, you know, one size fits all, and we know now that we would be very, very powerful. Uh, but that is, in essence, the reason why we need to keep that dialogue on the basis of 1373 and 2462, that specific resolution, resolution so um, um, uh, tied. And that's the reason why I see that has as privileged ongoing dialogue with all the member states, focusing and, 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 and targeting all these matters, from legal frames to national um, uh, counterterrorism strategies uh, to um, um, uh, CVE, uh, to uh, the whole of society, the whole of government approach, because you need all of this in relation to CFT. We ask uh, uh, the, the, the member states, uh, what, are you, what is your legislation? Who are uh, the institutions dealing with uh, um, uh, CFT? What are your cases? Did you investigate, prosecute those cases? What is your success uh, rate? Uh, what, is, what is your national risk? Uh, all these questions are being posed in an equal way in the 193 countries, according to the same methodology, in order to have an even-handed, uh, correct, efficient way of verifying the status of uh, compliance. So we have a lot of information, but I can't tell you now, in a nutshell, this is now uh, the way uh, financing of terrorism is being um, 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 done, because it's, it's, I think, in my opinion, and I've now 35 years of fight against terrorism behind me, one of the most complex areas in fighting terrorism. So that is uh, for sure the case. Now, um, I, I like the second question. Um, uh, I was in, in, in a recent consultation with uh, the, 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 the 15 uh, PRs of the Security Council, because we're in the mode of uh, preparing the note uh, uh, forward, how uh, uh, we um, look at uh, the, the future uh, mandate, which is totally in the hands of the Security Council, CTC, of course. Uh, and one uh, of the PRS taught me literally, how do you manage to do so much with so little? Well, um, I'm not the, be the, the, the nicest boss. I make all my people work uh, very uh, hard, uh, but I'm, I'm also blessed by having 50 um, um, subject matter experts who really work very hard or at the top uh, of their uh, expertise. Uh, knowing that uh, some domains need uh, more uh, intensive uh, uh, care, I would say, uh, more research, more uh, analysis, which is also in, in, in an important part of our uh, work, um, um, I think that we, we need to ask ourselves the questions. At the highest level, will we be able to uh, continue to, I would say, execute our mandate uh, in an efficient and effective uh, way and have an impact and results with an extremely uh, uh, extended mandate. We have a, a regular budget. You know, because of the business we run, uh, we are assessing, we, we follow the implementation, then we are the vehicle towards the technical assistance, and then we make sure that all the best practices, all the standards are being promoted, and we analyze because of our close partnership with the research entities, all the new trends and developments. We cannot be not independent, not neutral, and not objective. So we cannot depend uh, on, on uh, money. We can run some project. But that is a question that absolutely needs to be addressed at the highest uh, level. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that we have had results uh, with a very small uh, team by being, being very creative, even on the COVID-19 continuing business uh, with hybrid visits. We moved from in-person visits to hybrid uh, visits online um, and, and, and so forth and so on. We had our analytical products and so forth and so on. Good question to be answered soon. And then we have um, um, terrorism. Um, I have said this that one of the, the progress made is that the legal frames have evolved. Um, um, part of it is that we have um, um, clear uh, and not too broad uh, uh, legislation in relation to terrorism. 
uh, we of course, and especially in some of the countries and under COVID-19, have seen that uh, heavily securitized measures uh, uh, led uh, to um, a non-respect of human rights. Uh, now, a, a, a recurrent theme in our work is to say that uh, Counterterrorism and um, uh, human rights go hand in hand. Uh, they are um, um, mutually reinforcing. So you can't have any counterterrorism measure which is not in compliance with human rights, total respect uh, uh, for um, uh, the human uh, rights, uh, for gender, for um, an age sensitive uh, approach. This is the, the fin rouge, this is a, a recurrent uh, theme uh, which is transpiring in a lot of security councils. So this is heavily being. Um, uh, um, um, discussed during our uh, assessment uh, rounds. It, it can only be counterproductive if you have uh, measures taken um, uh, not in compliance with human rights uh, and if you use uh, terrorism uh, legislation uh, for other reasons than it's meant for. Thank you. Um, we'll take a question from the screen. Iftigar, please go ahead. Uh, thank you for doing this briefing. You have spoken about uh, the uh, how active ISR or Daesh has become in Afghanistan. Do you have actual number of uh, uh, estimated uh, an estimate of terrorists this organization has? And secondly, there are reports that some. Uh, some soldiers of the defeated Afghan army are joining ISIL. ISIL. Is, are these reports correct? May I ask you to repeat the second question because I didn't see that uh, very well. So I have, I've understood your question in uh, relation to the numbers, but not the second one. Uh, yeah, the, 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 there are reports in the media that some soldiers of defeated Afghan army are joining ISIL. Are these reports correct? Well, I can answer you that uh, together with you. We have seen this in the media, but I can't uh, confirm, not deny this, because I'm not placed uh, to answer that question. I have no information in that regard. In relation to the numbers, I don't think that we have precise numbers, that anybody has uh, precise uh, uh, numbers for the moment. Thank you for the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any more questions from the room? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank for you. joining us today.